Well, the cat's out of the bag now. I was not at the Meadows today because after the last race in, after my race in, uh, after my race at uh, Columbus in Scioto last night, I get in my car and I drove as far as I could, which got me to, I don't even know where I was, got me to a hotel. I stayed overnight, I get up at 7.30 and I finished my trip all the way to Ontario to hang out with these rugrats and this woman here. Hang out with my family. Yes, she would fall under rugrats. And uh, hang out with the family for the next two days. Now I do have to be back at the Meadows on Monday morning early. I have to, be, I have to leave early. I have to be back at the Meadows for 11.45 on Monday morning. But nevertheless, two days is two days and it's well worth it. I had asked Mark to drive Arctic, uh, Arctic Force for me tonight, today. He did, he raced well. And uh, we didn't have anything on tap for Saturday. So uh, I, I had, actually, that's a lie. I had, dri I had drives tonight at uh, Northfield Park that I booked off of. Um, you know, I appreciate that people are going to put me down on their horses, and, and uh, I like that. You know, I'll never tell anybody no, but at the same time, I had to tell everybody no this weekend because uh, I want to make sure I get home. You know, this week is is has been hectic because of looking at babies and going to fairs and getting a root canal, which by the way, didn't hurt at all. Zero, never hurt for a second. Um, I swear at it, it didn't. But uh, it was it's nice to be home for a day. You know, I get home at, at noon. I did some of my videos. You guys probably found out. I know I was try I was gonna keep it a secret, but you guys probably saw I did a lot of my videos. <laughs> I was driving down the road and then hey making out you're just gonna wreck the place. And then I uh, and then I um, I actually pulled into my house in the last part of the last video and I pulled back out and drove around. Anyway. Um, we only have three videos left. There were the three trainers and I wanted to see the horses race today at Sarnia, Hiawatha Horse Park, and then we obviously had the horses at um, the horse at the Meadows. So I got a good look at them. I was happy with Arctic Forest, but let's start with Harry Poulton's barn. Now, Harry had a pretty good day. I think uh, maybe no free lunch wasn't as good as they thought he would be today. Anyway, I talked about that in another video. It's not the end of the world. It happens, but uh, we need to protect no free lunch the next couple of weeks. There's a couple of horses floating around that had allergies, that had issues that they were trying to treat, uh, and three of them landed in Mario's barn with War We Welcome, uh, Walk on the Moon, and uh, no, and well, no free lunch is in Mario's barn. He drove. Them. So let's let's just start with Harry's barn. Beef and cheddar was fantastic today. I'll be I'll be truthful. I didn't see the race. I missed it. But I had immediate response from two or three clients that said, wow, that horse raced good. He raced so, so good. And he really did, uh, by the line anyway. It looks like he raced great. Um, Mario kept him covered up. And I think had we had a similar journey with the other colt, we would have had a favorable response or result. But I can't really blame uh, somebody for driving a three to five shot like he's a three to five shot. Didn't work out well. I'm sure he'll bounce back really strong from that. He's been a really tough, resilient colt all year. So I'm not worried about him. But beef and cheddar was fantastic. Somebody pointed out right away, bonus, bonus was, hey, we didn't get disqualified. First time in his life, he actually went on the track, raced, and didn't get disqualified for going through pylons. He was third and looked very, very good doing it. Braymar, Johnny and, and uh, Shelby take care of Braymar. And trying to put weight on him. If he doesn't get it on, then we will turn him out and get it on him one way or another. I'm not racing that horse skinny. Need to get weight on him. I've been saying this for a week. Johnny said he's getting putting weight on. He's looking better. Now, per the rules of Woodbine, I can't go to the barn. Not until I get a negative COVID test. I'll be back in Ohio by the time that test comes back. So I'm just not going to the barn. So I've asked Amy to take a look at uh, Braymar tomorrow and tell me how he is. she got to go and go with White Tiger anyway. So... Hey, honey, don't. So, Bramer, uh, we'll get the weight back on him. Brilliant Corners was entered for Tuesday. We needed a couple extra days. We had a few little hiccups with him. We were planning on racing him Tuesday in the two-year-old. Eva. Tuesday in the non-winners of two or 15 for two-year-olds. Um, but it didn't fill. It didn't fill. So, we're just going to go ahead and qualify. Adeline. We're just going to go ahead and fill... Uh, put him in the qualifiers on Tuesday. We'll get him raced sometime in the weekend. But he needs... Ava, 
I don't care. He needs um, he needs a good start. Then we have no free lunch, as I said. He get uh, Mario left for them today, twenty-seven fifty-six and two, one twenty-five and one. He got a little tired. Maybe he uh, maybe he was a little short. You know, the other call. Every horse is different, and for whatever reason, he just come up a little bit short. So uh, no free lunch, as I'd said to Harry after, and, and I'll talk to Mario. You know, we're just gonna have to protect that colt for a couple of starts. Make sure he bounces back strong. He missed a month in the summer. He'll be strong towards the the end of the year. We just have to have to make sure that we protect him. Northern Blizzard is in to go. Mario is going with him on, I don't know what day it is, Tuesday, Monday. Monday or Tuesday is in a stake race at Woodbine. And he qualified great the other day. Mario was very, very happy with him. Of course, can't race our horses in stake races without drawing eight or nine. So we drew the eight hole on uh, whatever day that is. But I looked at the class real good. Looks like he fits well. and I know Mario thinks the horse is real good. So he's coming in good. He's coming in sharp. He's coming in sound. Uh, should be a good performance for Northern Blizzard. Tipsy and Dixie certainly bailed me out, really took me out of the fire the other day. I told everybody I made the mistake, and I, I, I did knit her. Tipsy and Dixie in the grassroots. Put her in the gold. Old Dixie, she's a worker. Fourth, closing on the end of the mile. Just could beat for third. Now, somebody said, well, she's staying in the golds. I know, she's not. She'll be back in Hanover next Saturday in the grassroots. It's a filly that should be one of the favorites, one of the contenders in the grassroots series and has been doing very, very good things for us. So Tipsy and Dixie will be rewarded with a little class drop. Very impressed with this filly's tenacity. Always have been. So Tipsy and Dixie will be heading back to Hanover next Saturday. Capistrano needs a little more time. She's going to race. She's going to race. But as I said the other day, we're all going to have to bite her lip until she gets her mojo back. So find her an easy trip. Draw a favorable position, first and foremost. Uh, find her an easy trip, and hopefully we start putting up some better numbers with our girl, Capistrano. Muscle Chrome, we're giving, just going easy with Muscle Chrome and into the fall, uh, into the fall a little bit. Uh, get her back, uh, get her on track to begin with. As I, I alluded to a couple of times, Nancy Allison and Muscle Chrome, probably gonna breed them this spring. Um, you know, we, we dabbled a little bit into the broodmare shed, what? We dabbled a little bit into the broodmare shed. Both these horses have powerful families. Um, I, obviously, I have to do more investigating in the fact that I don't know. When I look at the program page on both of those horses, they're very, very strong. I do want to have a second and third and fourth opinion. But when it comes to muscle chrome, I like to put a mark on her, put a little bit of money on her. I think we're best suited to do that in the fall and winter. So that's the plan with muscle chrome. And then Trafalgar, of course, got to draw that old nine hole. Drew, uh, drew the you know the cemetery on uh, I think it's Monday or Tuesday. You're just gonna have to race her easy and hope things work out. You're not gonna go blasting out of there out of the nine hole. That's not gonna fix anything. I think this filly's gonna have a real good fall for us. She might be a filly that ends up in another jurisdiction also for us. But I think Trafalgar's got some time to spend at the stable.ca and she's got a bright future ahead of her. So yes, hey, I'm really upset about the nine holes, but what are you gonna do? And then White Tiger, I think. Five weeks in a row running up the weeks, probably enough, don't you think? Up the week or up the wood? Up the wood. Did I say the week? Yeah. Up the wood. Uh, running him up the wood for five weeks in a row. I, I think he's sharp enough now. I, I think that maybe we should be able to race him. So um, I told James if he doesn't race him well on Monday, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna injure him worse than his broken collarbone. So uh, he won't be able to draw him up. Yeah, yeah, he won't be able to drag him off the gate. He won't be able to take him back off the gate with his broken collarbone. So it's probably a good thing. Maybe White Tiger was looking out for himself. Uh, so hopefully White Tiger gets raced and raced hard on uh, on Monday. He's coming in sharp. Trained well on Wednesday. Hey, he's coming in sharp on Monday. So we're hoping for the best for White Tiger. That's Harry Poulton's burn. Addy, I'll throw you out the window. What? I'll be back in a second. We still got Mario's burn and Kevin's burn. Be right back.